I'm just cleaning my glasses so that I can see you can see me better. Um, okay. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the fourth uh, uh, webinar, I think we're calling it, of the Lockdown Sailing Rules Challenge. Um, this case um, comes from a recurring situation which we've had at many events over the years um, and is uh, happens quite often when we have we're running coastal or offshore races uh, it raises several issues uh, one being uh, what does sailing the course mean uh, the second point being um, a question of who's actually the police or who's the referee and lastly uh, in these quite different situation to a sort of a dinghy race uh, how do you go about protesting uh, to start with um, look back at the rules of what does sailing the course mean it says that your boat shall start sail the course um, as described in the sailing instructions and finish that means that uh, the sailing instructions are a key document uh, in these cases and very often when there's um, an issue about whether boats have sailed the course we end up having to uh, read very carefully um, the sailing instructions to see whether how the course was described um, and we have had issues at, at events where we decided it's not the competitors fault that there's a, there's a a discussion about what course for sale but it's actually the sailing instructions then there's um what we call the string test which is um in rule 28.2 where you basically use a piece of the image of a piece of string around the course and that requires a boat to pass each mark on the required side and in the correct order now when the word pass is in, in, in interesting it doesn't mean necessarily uh go very near it you it, very often in offshore races uh, you go nowhere near the mark but it's there to set a limit to, um uh, so that you don't for instance when you're crossing the southern ocean you don't go too far south or to keep people away from um crowded areas so the key point for the um the debate about rule 28 and there's been a long discussion over the years uh, by judges is that you at the moment do not break rule the rule 28.2 until the boat finishes and the reason that that uh, this is the case is because until you finish you may correct an error now um I understand that uh, there is a rule change on its way for the, for the next rule book, but we are applying the current rule book in this uh, example. So, in this case, we're talking about uh, a situation where there's an allegation that a, a one or two boats have not sailed the course as required by the sailing instructions. The question was, what do we do about it? And that takes us back to the question that who is the police? Who is the referee out on the water? We have in sailing a basic principle, which is almost unique to sailing. Um, golf has a similar um, idea. And I think there's one of the combat sports or, as well. And that is, um, what we tend to call the self-policing rule the competitors in the sport of sailing are governed by a body of rules that they are expected to follow and enforce so that is clearly stating that uh, the people who are the referee are principally the competitors themselves it is your job to enforce the rules uh, a fundamental principle of sportsmanship is that when competitors break a rule, they will promptly take a penalty, which may be to retire. Um, 
the way I like to put it is you are the police and the first person that you police is yourself. Okay, now this is a fundamental principle of the way we run our sport. Uh, and it's one which I think in judges in particular are very keen to maintain. Um, we don't really want to get to a situation except for match racing, team racing and some Olympic races where you have a whole host of referees or umpires running around blowing whistles at people. The idea is that it is the competitors who uh, run or, or enforce the rules during saving. So you are the police, the first person that you police is yourself. A third point is that you shouldn't expect the race committee to police whether boats are sailing the course. Um, especially in coastal and offshore racing, because basically, unless they've got tracking or they've sent a boat out to monitor what's happening, um, or they've got a drone or some kind of system, um, once the race committee sends the, the fleet of boats out over the horizon, they don't really know what's, what's happen happening. So you can't wait for the, re the race committee. And the second point is that, um, a race committee is never actually obliged to protest a boat. Um, World Sailing Case 39 tells us that the primary resp responsibility for enforcing the rules lies with the competitors. And that is an important point. It goes back to our self-policing principle. So the next issue that, that arises in this case is uh, how to protest and once you do the boat the, uh, green banner has decided they are going to protest they actually have to do it there is a special rule for protest protesting errors in sailing the course it's rule 61.183 and to resume there is no need to hail or display a red flag uh, and but there is an obligation to inform the other boat before the other boat finishes or at the first re reasonable opportunity after the other boat finishes now um, there is nothing therefore that obliges you in the rules to protest or to t inform the other boat of your intention to protest before that boat finishes. Uh, it might be a friendly gesture, it will be very sporting, uh, but it's not an obligation. However, there is an obligation to do it, at, to inform them at the first reasonable opportunity after the other boat finishes. And I this is the issue that can uh, cause problems. Questions as we go or questions at the end? Uh, could we put them at the end, probably, or no, unless no. it's unless it's about understanding what I'm, I'm saying? No, it was uh, how do we unpick? I think that's a, an opportunity to protest before a rule has actually been broken. So I was just um, unpicked. Yes, but uh, the rule specifically says that you can do it. Okay. okay. I have a question, if you don't mind. Um, if you pass the boat during the race after the incident, is it not up to you to at that time to protest them because the, the rule says shall inform you the boat either before or at the first reason after. So yes. the opportunity to inform them during the race should you not do so? We lost Gordon there? I think so. Gordon, we lost you there for a, for a minute. The yes, screen is no longer shared. Uh, can, you, you know, can you see my? Yeah, we can see and hear you. Can you see my um, slideshow? No. No, we've lost it. Uh, 
I thought you just didn't want to answer the question. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Um, you don't have, there's no obligation to see them when, if you sail past them during, uh, during, the, during the race. Um, once again, coming back to Rick's question, because technically they haven't yet broken the rule. And uh, you can tell them, the rule allows you to do it, but it doesn't actually say that you must do it as long as you fulfill the obligation to tell them as soon as possible after finishing. Now, that might lead to a lively discussion in the bar, but then other boats who, if you, if, you know, if you see only see one of the two boats during the race and you tell them the other boat might get, and they go back and correct themselves, the other boat might not be very happy about it. Okay, so it's, it's up to you basically as I read it. The first reasonable opportunity can mean uh, giving, informing somebody face to face. So in or near the finishing area. Uh, however, if people have cut the corner on the course, they usually finish quite a long way in front of you. So that's not going to happen. Uh, on the mooring, the pontoon or the boat park or on the way back in. Once again, if they finished an hour in front of you, that's not going to happen. Uh, in the club or bar. Okay, that's the first, what we would do, the protest committee will say, well, how did you do the, uh, how did you inform them? And then we'll listen to how you do it and, uh, decide whether it was the first reasonable opportunity. I think the key point is that they need to be told before the protest time limit uh, because that allows them to take action which may be to decide that they have sailed the wrong course and therefore they want to retire. Um, you can use um, an old word telecommunication. Uh, you can send a message by VHF I would strongly advise that in that case, you um, receive acknowledgement from the people that they have received your message. Uh, otherwise, uh, you may be taught, you know, you, you may be talking and nobody listening, nobody hearing you. You can use telephone or text or email or messenger services. The problem being that you need to get uh, the contacts addresses. You may have them. In many club situations, you will. In bigger events, that can be a real problem. Uh, so obtaining proof of, proof of reception, yes, many times if you, send, if you leave a message on a, an answering machine, you don't have any proof that they have uh, um, received the message. If you send uh, a text or a WhatsApp, uh, you can know that the message has been received by the telephone. I'm not sure that you can uh, know or, uh, whether it's actually been read or not. Um, there is a big problem at multi-club regattas, for instance, at the Dunleary Regatta, where you have boats going back to uh, four clubs. Uh, they're also going, not all boats are actually going back to clubs because you have people going back to, uh, they prefer to go to, to spoons because the beer is cheaper uh, or other things like that. Um, and in coastal and offshore races, there may be a big problem about uh, the lead, lead boat, they've gone home, they might, have, they might be five or six hours in front of you. Uh, this happens particularly in the Isora races where there can be a big, big time difference. Um, and in that case, it can be quite difficult to contact them. Uh, something's happened here. I've just lost uh, half of my... Uh, the um, one thing you can do 
uh, if you're trying to get uh, contact details, is have a talk to the um, uh, the race office. Now, up until a few years ago, there was usually no problem about handing out uh, telephone numbers or other emails. There may be a problem with uh, now people getting very paranoid about uh, data protection. Um, and uh, the so that's uh, you may have a problem there. The last resort, um, if you've exhausted all other possibilities, is to put up a small notice on or near the official notice board. Now, some events they get very upset if you start putting things on the official notice boards, you might have to put it next to the official notice board. Um, stating your intention to protest. As a personal recommendation, and we might discuss this between judges later, I would suggest that all of these big regattas, there should be provision uh, in the sailing instructions to tell people, to give people a standard procedure saying, you know, if there's a protest um, and having taken all reasonable steps to make contact, this is what you should do. Uh, but uh, that's not accepted by everybody. Um, and now apologies, uh, I seem to have lost uh, half of my Gordon, if you don't mind, uh, just on what you just said, um, yep. it seems to me that the easier course of action would be to launch a protest anyway within the time frame, so you're not caught out in, in going beyond the time frame. And uh, we we uh, haven't got to that yet. Oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm just trying to, for some reason, the, ah, here we are. Okay. Can you see my, sorry, the, when, when we got shut off, uh, it switched to an older version of the, uh, okay. Uh, can you see my slideshow? Yeah, how to protest for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yes, place a notice. Uh, if When you say that, declaring your intention to protest, I would ad strongly advise naming the boats and very briefly describing the incident so that people know what you're talking about. Uh, th the next point is, yes, deliver the protest to the uh, race office before the protest time limit. Sorry, Gordon. Yes, I think you're still sharing the old version of the presentation, so you might oh. need to, to stop sharing that and <sighs> a new one. Okay, sorry. Um, share screen. Can you see that now? No. Mm -hmm. we see you, you have to accept the share screen. So you click on the window that you want to share and then bottom right you'll see share in a blue button. Yeah. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Yes, that's fine now. Fine. Good. Thank you very much. It's very difficult to see what when you're just sailing blind like that. Um, yes, get the protest in. Uh, even if um, you uh, have not yet informed the, the, the other boats. It is important to get that protest in it. That you were trying to look for the guys is not a, a reason, a valid reason for missing the protest time limit, okay? Um, as this is usually a case of um, uh, involving crew boats, you can split the crew up and one lot can be looking for the um, for the other crews of the other boats or while the while another group is uh, getting the protest in. Is that okay? 
Sure. Okay. Now, sometimes people are you are very indignant that, um, especially when it's a question of saving the course, uh, that the boats that broke the rule also went beyond complying with recognised principles of sportsmanship and fair play. Uh, I would advise, if you do feel this, and we'll come on to what that actually means, I would advise helping the protest committee to reach the same conclusion. And one way of doing this is to mention it in the, on the protest form. So in this particular case, you'd say, um, you know, uh, the something, something like the, um, the course was clear, it was, it was easy to understand, and uh, I'm very upset about these people going past, uh, not setting the course, and I think it, it's unsportsmanlike behavior. So you'd say something like that on the protest, on the protest form, just to help the, uh, to remind the, uh, the protest committee that uh, they, 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 they might want to consider that. So, any breach of good sportsmanship is defined as misconduct, and you can see this in uh, Rule 69.1b1. And if I can just move this out of the way, there we are. Uh, World Sailing Case 138 gives a list of what it understands to be misconduct. And that includes intentionally breaking a rule. So if you believe that the guys in this case have not sailed out to the mark out into the current and they did that intentionally with uh, to gain an advantage, then this would come under the under that heading. Any action by a competitor that directly affects the fairness of the competition should first be considered under rule two, which is the fair sailing rule. This is again, we find this in case 138. And only if it's a serious breach of the rule should this be considered under Rule 69. Um, that's, leave that to the, um, the discretion of the protest committee, but you will have your say in the protest hearing. So those are, when I looked at it, the, all the issues arising from this case. Um, and very often, problems about who sailed what course can give rise to a degree of ill feeling within an event, to say the least. Um, I mean, if we can give one example, um, a lot of us missed watching the All Blacks get beaten by Ireland in Chicago because we were reopening a hearing about how people had sailed the course and finished in a Volvo Dunleary regatta. Now, if it's serious enough to miss that match, it is a serious affair. Um, okay, that's basically all I have to say. Are there any questions? Or comments from my colleagues? Well, I just asked a question. Uh, we didn't get any feedback on this. Is this going to be the way going forward? We just get the scores then? Uh, no, no, I will. I will. Um, I believe last time it was sent out the next day. Um, and I will. So I'll be sending it out tomorrow. All fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very Basically, much. Basically, I don't think anybody got on to uh, talking about Rule 2 and Rule 69. <sighs> Um, that's um, possibly because it's not something we do very often. But uh, in this particular case, you know, when people start not sailing the, the, the right course and it gains them a big advantage, um, and there's no apparent ambiguity in the way the course was written, uh, I would suggest that 
protest committees should at least discuss whether they're going to go to rule two. Um, they may decide not to, but um, you know we, we we should be at least talking about it. Gordon, did I get from you that rule two was a little bit less kind of detrimental or less onerous than rule sixty nine? In other words, it's seen as a lesser or slightly lesser offence. Um, slightly uh yes in the to the extent that a serious breach of rule two can also be investigated under rule 69. which is you go to a two nearly before you go to 69. uh for something for an incident which directly affects the competition so in this case not saving the course you you consider rule two and only uh go to 69 if you thought it was so serious uh, rule 69 is used a lot for uh incidents that don't happen during the competition like um changing the keel on your boat or taking a um, couple of hundred weight off out out of the bottom of the boat um nobody ever does that do they uh or getting a set of sails that are slightly bigger than the the ones that you're supposed to have um, or other kinds of incidents uh, the rules or the interpretations do in state that we should part if when it's something that happens directly involving the, the competition which is usually what happens on the water or on the way out on the water or something um, we should go, go through go to rule two first and only then go to rule 69. And the last sentence says the penalty shall be either disqualification or disqualification that is not excludable. I thought that all all um disqualified all sort of negative protests were disqualifications that are not excludable. No the rule two is a special case and there's a bit of history there up until uh 2017 it was DNE and there was a certain reluctance on the part of many protest committees to use rule two because it was a non-excludable disqualification <laughs> it was thought it was too heavy a penalty so the option was given in the rules to choose um, I understand that that has meant that there's no, for many people that, that, for many protest committees, that has meant at many protests, there has been no additional penalty for breaking rule two. You're disqualified for breaking a rule and they say you also break, broke rule two. My understanding is that um, in the new rule book, we will be no longer have the option of disqualifying a boat. It has to be a D and E. It is supposed to be um, a rule that's applied for an aggravated breach of the rules. Okay. And what's DNE? DNE is means you cannot exclude the disqualification from your score, okay. from your series score. So if you get disqualified and that's, that would normally be your discard in a series, you cannot discard it. Okay. okay. I would like to raise a query about the um, requirement to inform the other boat. Yes. Um, I, I used to sail in the Solent um, some years ago, yes. and it was commonplace that boats would cross the finish line and then head off to another club. Yes. Um, in those circumstances, very often it was a race series. The first that the protested boat might know about the protest would be that on when they looked at their results, they find themselves under protest and they would tend to hold the protest on a different day would be the normal procedure in those races. Um, and then is that not, and, and so what you would do as a competitor protesting in these circumstances would be to put the protest through, say you try to find the other people, you would hear that the boat's gone home. You go, okay, you don't know who they are. 
So you just let the protest authority know that you're protesting and put in put in the formal protest and let them do the uh, make the communication. Is that not reasonable under the circumstances? I think it was standard mm. practice in some places. Mm. Uh, whether it meets the requirements of the rule is another question. <laughs> So, uh, I'm, I'm being a bit non-committal. Personally, I think that uh, uh, the, there's two things there. One, uh, the boat has to make a reasonable attempt. And he has to succeed. That's what the rule says. He shall inform the other boat. It's, I think it means that also that the um, event organizers, the organizing authority and the uh, race committee have to include in their event organization some realistic way of informing people. Mm. Now, <clears throat> the notice on the notice, um, the, the I'm not actually convinced that there is a, a, a perfect answer. Uh, in, for instance, the French transoceanic races, the protestor uh, informs the race director, who then informs the other boat. Yeah. Um, and I know some judges would be very unhappy about that because that's the race, they <laughs> see that as the race organization taking over the, um, the competitor's responsibility. If, um, sorry, Gordon, if yes. I may, I mean, I, I would agree with you, but mm. the bottom line is when there's no specific procedure in place that mm. has been either described through the same instructions or, you know, then we're left with nothing. Mm. So, you know, how can a boat fulfill that obligation? I, well... <laughs> and the answer is... You know, probably, yes. you'll have to prove that he's exhausted that they've exhausted every possibility to do that including placing a notice on the notice yeah. board mm. yeah. and that's why more and more we should be seeing you know these procedures in place as part of the yes of the of now, their notice of race and their their selling instructions mostly well one point that often comes up uh, is um, the boat that sails away, and, and I know uh, um, at Cow's Week, for instance, there's boats in Southampton and Portsmouth and all over the place, Limington, they're all over the place. Um, that does not actually uh, absolve you of the requirement to look at the notice board. If the notice board is the official means of communication between uh, the race committee, the protest committee, and the competitors, it is the competitors' obligation to actually look at it, uh, which often makes people quite unhappy, but um, they, they do have to look at the notice board. But that's really unrealistic in many of those races because, you know, the uh, the clubhouse is up the river somewhere. The um, course is right up in the middle of a piece of racing water and the boats turn up onto the course and they don't go anywhere near the clubhouse, either before or after the race. Yes, I agree. I agree. There is a, that's why there is an issue. Mm. Um, and I, for me, uh, the way to solve it is not by saying it's the competitors who have to do everything. Well, we well, have to we have to have a reasonable well um here's um a, a suggestion from me uh say in cow's week where we have uh, all these uh, mm. both, uh, coming and going if 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 every class was provided with a list of name of boat owner and contact details that, that could be a solution, yes. Seems very simple to me. Um, and, and therefore, the onus would be on the, uh, 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 the protestor to 
make sure that they have the information. But I think really what we're talking about in these scenarios are the more long distance races where we just Well, no, the issue arrives in the coastal, the coastal class in, in Dunleary Week, for instance. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. But, but again, again, they don't, all, they don't all go to the George or whatever. Oh, yeah. It's a, 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 Dunleary is the same situation. It's less of um, an issue in, for instance, in Cork Week because everybody goes back basically goes back um well perhaps perhaps you'd have to put a notice board up in cronin's in order to make sure that everybody saw it but uh the uh, uh it's less of an issue but in dunleary week it, it is a big issue well a list of contacts for each class seems very simple to me the condition there would be that you'd have to ask for everybody's permission under data protection legislation oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So you make it an option. Hmm. Is it mandatory uh, for boats to have a radio? Pardon? Mostly now, is it usually mandatory for boats to have a VHF? That depends on the class and the event. Hmm. Uh, in uh, offshore, offshore races, yes. Um, they may even have to carry more sophisticated, you know, satellite telephones and things. Mm -hmm. uh, coastal races that depends on where you are. Uh, I'm not sure in Bray Sailing Club whether there's an obligation, I can't remember. Um, mm -hmm. The other problem about the radio is uh, that you, you may transmit a message, but uh, has it been received? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, just uh, just as a comment, uh, back here in uh, in Finland, we have now been uh, for the last couple of years we've been using this uh, concept of virtual uh, notice board mm. that we have been using. I mean, for um, for example, we have mostly been using Manage to Sail, but uh, there are other options mm -hmm. as well that we have sort of set up in the the notice of race and so on. That uh, the official notice board mm. is this uh, this internet. Uh, address and we post there everything that is sort of official and yeah. then uh, that sort of takes away the uh, necessity for the everybody to come to a specific uh, club after racing so we have we can use uh, this as a means of communication and i'm guessing Agreed. that this would be a sort of you know even here we, we, i mean we have been having discussions about okay is this okay if everybody has uh, tablets or smartphones and blah 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 but still, I'm guessing that the pluses and minuses we have been sort of thinking that okay, it's still easier for everybody. It is, it's more reasonable to expect the people having phones compared to people actually coming physically to one specific uh, notice board. Yes. Um, I mean, we have had situations where uh, a boat has protested against the rest of the fleet um and it was decided that the pro only the protests against the boats that had been informed by the protesting boat were valid so you you might have a protest against 10 boats and only two of them are declared valid and that's a situation we really do want to avoid because that's you know that's uh Right. It's not showing uh, us in a good light, quite frankly. In, in that instance, would the protest committee then protest the rest of the boats themselves? No, they can't. On what on the ba on what basis? If you go to uh, what a protest committee is allowed to do, having declared that a protest is valid, protest. A committee may protest a boat, but not as a result of information arising for a request for redress or an, an invalid protest. So having said that protest is invalid because you haven't informed the other competitor, we cannot then um, protest. Okay. okay, this is what this is why and it, 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 it's the situation, the kind of situation that becomes messy and everybody's unhappy 
the, the protest or because he thinks that he hasn't been listened to and people have got away with uh, with breaking the rule the uh, uh, protest committee is unhappy because they've had to not hear hearings because of a technicality um, and uh, all the other classes are muttering about how such and such a class is very unsporting and whatever. So, you know, it's a messy situation and it has happened. Uh, Gemma and Chris will back me up. Uh, no. <laughs> quite frequently. <laughs> I think, yeah, it's also worth remembering that uh, everything the protest committee decides will be on the balance of probabilities. Mm. So they decide, is it more likely than not to have happened? Um, so you don't have the obligation to prove that the other boat that you're trying to protest definitely, you definitely informed them. Mm. Um, so I don't think you have to prove that they read your text or they answered the phone or whatever. But the more evidence you can build up, you know, if you come into the protester yep. and you say, I tried to ring him and he didn't answer. I text him. I put it in a, on the notice board. The yep. mu it's much more likely than not than mm. that, that he was aware. Um, it's very common for us to get protests where one party says, I hailed protest, and the other says, oh, I didn't hear it. Yes. It's funny how everyone's hearing suddenly um, it switches off. But the more evidence you build up, the better the chance you have of the protest committee agreeing with you. So that would be what I would say. Um, what, as I say, what frequently happens is the, the protest all comes in. Well, I say, I say there's 10 boats that didn't sail the course, and I found five of them. And the others I don't, um, he may, you know, he might have an entry list. And that's about he knows everybody went round the course uh well he and only he and another boat went round the right mark uh but that's really all he knows he knows their cell number and it's yes a messy situation just going back to the the fact that you can't do it from an invalid protest wouldn't you be basing that information for the protest committee on a valid protest therefore they could protest the other boats uh, well, there's been a, an invalid protest against the boat. But there's then also been a whole series of valid protests on that well, same there's... incident. <sighs> Chris can see where I'm coming from by smiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a good point, but it's not super clear to me. So, um... so then it follows it up with 60.3.2. Uh, yeah. So there, there might be, there, there, there's, there's a number of issues here. Mm. I think through the scenarios that we've been a few times, you might find that a, um, someone files a protest against, you know, these boats, okay? Mm. Or all of the fleet. Yeah. And through the initial, and, and you may call everybody and you do the validity part. And you might find at that point that you have one valid protest against one boat and 10 invalid protests, mm. okay? Those have been invalid already. You cannot go through the valid protest to an invalid protest. That would be one view. If the protest, or, the protest or file a single protest against a single boat, for example, and you found that valid, and through the evidence of that, you discover that other boats were, then yep. mm. you might have that door open. So if one of the boats that was protest um, discovers that there are boats that have other boats that haven't sailed the course, and this is news to them, would we consider extending the protest time limit? Or would we be in us, would we be able to consider extending the protest time limit if one of those recently disqualified boats chose to protest the boats that we had to throw the protest out for? I think there'd be a very lively discussion in the protest committee. <laughs> um, yeah. Surely the boat under 60.1 can't actually protest something because they didn't witness it um no they they, they... because it's not a rule of part two or rule 31 
rule 28 is doesn't include is not in part two of the rules mm. um and so you may learn that a boat didn't sail the course because you saw some tracking data for instance mm. uh in that scenario where a boat gets protested and then decides well i saw other boats didn't go around the mark i'm going to protest them well it's it's more as a as a because they've just been through the protest they now have evidence that there are other boats that haven't been protested that also didn't sail the course so the um and this is news to them this is the first time that they provided this is news to them would that present them with an opportunity to protest um we sort of had the bonds of that discussion the other day and it's not clear that's that's the bottom line i think you you could take that gamble and, and go down that route provided as you say that is new evidence but one of the first questions is, is when did you learn that these boats had not saved the course yeah you know and, and if you say oh well we saw them sailing not sailing around that mark but we didn't know that they had done anything wrong until we saw the results. Do you think that that's hardly going to play? That's not right? enough. Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, it'll depend on the conditions of the race because if it's a, definitely an offshore race and, you know, a long race might be, you know, other bits of evidence that, 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 that you know, that might be looked at. But again, I'll ask the question, you know, uh, you saw a boat that uh, normally is not does not feature in the top of of that class in, in that type of length of race, and you didn't have a look at the track, and you only came back with this, you know, three days after. What is going to happen? Hmm. You know. Could I take a, a a sideways question about policing the course? Um, yes. Which is that um, picture a scenario where boat one and two round a mark correctly and boat three rounds it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, boat one tells boat three, you know, shortly after they rounded it, you didn't round the right way, you've got to leave that to starboard. Yeah. Boat five complains that boat three has received outside assistance because boat five was hoping that he would be disqualified. <laughs> um, and it's all kind of fair play. And it, I just uh, wondered what you would think about that kind of situation. Interesting question, actually. Well, it, you then go on to uh, rule 41, where yeah. a boat shall not receive help from any outside source except and then uh, d unsolicited information from a disinterested source yes which may be another boat in the same race yeah uh the discussion then would be whether was there a particular reason uh for uh the boat boat one telling the others that they'd sailed the wrong course which may be it may be that they want the guy to to finish the race correctly uh because that means that boat 10 or whatever uh yeah. will go into 11th place and then boat one gets yes. the one point necessary to win the series i mean it's, yeah. it's it um every every case in that case in that instance is is, is unique will have to be <laughs> um but hopefully this never happens of course well mm -hmm. yes it does and it, <laughs> and it could also be it could also be as uh, as you referred to um earlier fair sailing <laughs> we yeah. to enjoy ourselves and if we see somebody doing something wrong well we might tell them same as the golf course yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day we're just we're out there doing our best if people get it wrong they get it wrong so we protest them and hope they learn from it <laughs> i think it very much depends on the the atmosphere of the riga the, the the race yeah now never forget that um this is not yeah. a recent problem uh there is still lively discussion about whether america 
So the, the course that was in the sailing instruction was from the, the, what was it, the Sovereign's Cup or the 100 Guineas Cup in 1851, which then became the America's Cup. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking about 170 years ago uh, and they're still talking about it. So, Gordon, if, if on a Thursday night around the cans, and sometimes it's the case, the lead yep. boat makes a mistake and goes around the wrong mark because they just read the R3 instead of R2, yeah, and the rest of the lemmings follow him because he's the lead boat and nobody knows what he's doing, and so they follow him. But one boat sticks to his guns and says, "No, I know for sure. I read the R3 course, and he's the only boat who says the correct course and finishes." Mm -hmm. uh, the others all finish well ahead of him, of course, with the say the shorter course. Mm -hmm. Is the proper procedure there to protest the whole fleet or to look for redress? And in so looking for redress that the committee you found with the redress is found to be correct should then not finish the rest of the fleet? The classic answer from judges is, it depends. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I will disagree. It doesn't depend. Unless there is a clear procedure on how that is going, going to be done in your sailing instructions, then no. You have to inform every single one of them. I once had well, my, uh, my, our skipper, they sail into the navigation channel, having to, between races, go to every single boat and inform them that they were being protested. And he got fed up and he did 10 boats and left out five. We got to the protest room and we had a valid protest against 10 boats, 10 boats and an invalid protest against five. My, my, my answer was why it depends <laughs> is uh, if the there is in any way um, an improper action of the race committee by setting an amb ambiguous course. Yes, you could uh, possibly think about requesting redress because they hadn't um, hadn't. No, they haven't because they've they've scored the boats that have finished. Yes, you have to protest. You have to protest. Hopefully. You have to protest and then yeah. if you want, seek redress mm. or, you know, some, as, as we had to do in the, in the mm. one, uh, yep. find a, an alternative arrangement. I was trying to trying to find a way of doing it without without the protest yeah. on the on the basis that. Uh, um, but no, because the the race committee can't change the results of the boats for not sailing the course unless the, unless he, he, the race committee protests and they've got no obligation to do it. So. But we managed yeah. to have redress hearing on something when once we had determined that the course had been ambiguous, if you remember. Are you yes. thinking, thinking but we had to have, last year? Yeah, but we had we had uh, we did have a, a hearing on it. Yeah, I got into terrible trouble many years ago for uh, basically disqualifying the whole fleet uh, and then giving them redress and rein, reinstating them after. So that the two boats that had sailed the correct course were one and two, and then the others were scored three, four, five, six, and seven afterwards, uh, because we dis we discovered that there was an error in the course, the way the uh, and um, uh, I was wasn't invited back to that club for about five years afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. The, uh, I, in, these, I, in, in most of these cases, the first thing to do is look at, was the course written out clearly? Um, and was there any ambiguity? But the, it, in order for it to get to that, there does have to be a protest. Does anybody else have any other questions for the six kids? Just, just to, to mention that I had once put down a sailing instruction that every boat will have a VHF and will have it turned on and that failure to hear a protest, uh, uh, a piece of information that's heard by the other boats will not be a valid reason uh, for, if you like, redress. <clears throat> Does that not solve some of the issues? If you're at a regatta where it has said, and it's like in the Volvo, where the sailing instructions will say, 
the race officer will give the course instructions by VHF on channel, blah, 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 blah. And it might even say, all books yep. shall monitor VHF channel, whatever it is. I think it's going to be pretty hard if you then try to notify somebody on that channel. It's going to be hard for them to argue they didn't hear it when they've been obligated to hear it. It doesn't really prove the point. But I think if you're at a regatta where that's the case, then you have a pretty good chance of being able but I really think that will be valid for fully crewed races. Uh, yeah. It might be questionable at uh, a single-handed or double-handed racing race when uh, yeah. either somebody might be asleep uh, and, you know... We... But, um, if we have a race VHF channel, it wouldn't be looked on too well of a thought to be broadcasting a protest over the same channel as the race committee channel. That's a question for the ra for race management. Mm. Um, it is a way of doing it is a way of doing things. Uh, it is one way of doing things. It comes back to my maybe initial question: If you get the chance to inform them on the water, it sounds like you should. If that's the first reasonable opportunity. Yeah. Mm. But, um, Any other questions? Oh. Please comments. No? Okay. I think uh, next week's scenario will be online tomorrow um, or later this evening if it's not already up there. Um, and this one goes back to, uh, so this is a more boat on boat scenario this time. Um, so we, we're alternating between kind of procedural things and boat on boat ones. Um, so it'll be, it'll be, and then we're also alternating um, presenters. So it'll be me again next week. Um, but yeah, same, same story. Um, and Sarah Lewis will send out the link to the webinar again as usual. Perfect. Well done. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.